Hi there, welcome. Welcome to Homekeepers. Come right on in, my friend. So glad to be here with you today. You'll be glad too if you hang around with us. Uh, but I do hope that your family is just doing so well and that you have the presence of the Lord in your home. It'll make all the difference in the world. I have never, ever, ever seen a time in America where there's uh, so much ugliness, uh, violence, hatred, and of course it's spread through social media and all, but you can make your home different. And this is uh, the reason for this program. So I'm glad you tuned in. And we like to just talk about everything on this program because uh, that's what home is all about. There, anything and everything affects the home. And uh, when you go to church and you learn about uh, missionaries that go around the world and we're in a time now where they can go so quickly and accomplish a lot. Uh, when I was growing up in church, you know, a missionary would di just disappear for four or five years. Uh, and a lot of times they went on a boat, you know, and uh, the work was very slow, but not today. And that's very scriptural. The Bible said that in those last days, uh, one will put 10,000 to flight and uh, things can happen rapidly. And that's what we're going to talk about today. A uh, man who was burdened to build, get this, churches, church buildings in the brush, the bush of Africa. And I don't know how many he's built so far. So uh, he'll tell you when he gets here, but he's been here before. Wayne Deary, he is the founder of the Plant International. And we'll show you some pictures and all, but it's so thrilling to see what God can do in a very, very brief time. I would ask you ahead of time to get your pencil out and take down uh, his information, the website and so forth. Because when you show something like this, that's so visible and easy, done quickly, the Holy Spirit can talk to you and say, you, you need to get involved in this. So why don't you do that? Uh, so also I've got Stephanie here. What could we do without her? We're going to do Hawaiian chicken salad. This is in our new cookbook. It's one I brought to the uh, book, and there's no end to the kinds of chicken salad you can do, but this one is the best. And after we fix it, you're going to say, I bet she's right, okay? And uh, before I join there, I want to tell you about this cookbook. You can have it for just $20. There's an 800 number there, 1-800-229-0059, and you can uh, get it that way or write to us, and it's got 100 recipes in it, and uh, we were very selective because we've done more than 3,000 recipes, so I hope you'll take advantage of it, and there's some information on the show inside and all, and uh, of course, when you do order it, you're helping us to go forward with this Homekeeper's Ministry, so thank you so much, and I want to tell you where I got this recipe. Mm -hmm. I had a friend and uh, her children went to kind of a hoity-toity school. There's different <laughs> levels of schools. But interestingly, the cookbook from that hoity-toity school, it's like all the ingredients and everything were a little more expensive. Mm -hmm. for and uh, this came from, and I'm not kidding you, after we uh, mix this, I think you're going to really be so interested good. in it. So this is two quarts of uh, cooked chicken. So this is a recipe from the cookbook. From that cookbook. From, the, from, from our from, cookbook, too. From the rich people's cookbook. But <laughs> also from our not-so-rich people cookbook, That's right. okay? That's right. So this is two quarts of chicken. Now, you could... You can take chicken breasts, you can bake them, you can shred them. You can get rotisserie chicken mm -hmm. if you want to mm -hmm. and make it make your life really easy, okay? And it's a big recipe. You could easily cut it in half. Or you could make it and share it. Because yes. that, who wouldn't want to get this I'll with some... I'll tell you my plan for the remainder of the day. Eating? Is to put some of that no. in a baggie and stop by and pick up some pita and... Well, I'm saying who wouldn't want to come home, okay? Mm -hmm. And you've left for them this yes. with some pitas, with some mm -hmm. healthy chips... And you've left dinner you wait, for somebody. It's full of crunch. Yep. Now, so I'm celery. Mix this. Yes. This is uh, three cups of mayonnaise. Mayonnaise. But let me tell you, when you start to put it in, put it in to suit yourself. Some people like more. Some people right. Like less. And then you have um, a tablespoon of curry, a tablespoon of soy sauce, soy sauce. and a teaspoon of lime juice is what yeah, you have. Let me tell you, the curry is kind of what sets it apart. It smells so good. This is going to be delicious. I might take a bowl of this just up to my desk and eat it for the mm -hmm. rest of the day. Well, there's so, enough here for an army. Right, so that's celery. 
And, the, and if you were having a family get together, uh -huh. what more do you need? Mm -hmm. um, chestnuts. Okay. This is a can of we chestnuts. We got celery chestnuts. That's crunchy, and we've got slivered almonds. Slivered That's almonds. Come on. And grapes. We got grapes Fresh and pineapple. Old grapes. <gasps> this is going to be so good. Mm. And I get to be the taste tester today, mm -hmm. so I'm excited. Okay, are you ready? Shake that all. There's a lot in there. Mm -hmm. Let's get it out. Well, do you want to put these grapes in? Yeah. After I put, let me put this in okay. first. Okay, sorry for the noise. Yes, there you sorry. Go. Okay. I don't taste that. Oh, my gosh. Oh. Yeah. I haven't fixed it for so long, I forgot how good this so is. So good. So easy. Especially Doctoring up your uh, mayonnaise like this, is you the could way use to... it in a lot of things. Yes. Okay, you want to put the pineapples and the grapes in for me? I really needed a bigger bowl, but that's okay. <laughs> There's not a bigger bowl. Look at the... Oh, got a uh -oh. grape stem. Oopsie. No stems for this chicken salad, and then pineapples, okay. please. If it, you would do pineapples, it really, it really needed all of the um, mayo. Oh didn't gosh, it? yeah, because mm -hmm. this is a lot of food. If yeah, you're you, having a family get together and you want to make something that's easy, this well, is your thing you've right You've got here. to uh, be in good oh. shape, though. To make, did I get that on you? Sorry. No, but we're making lots of noise. I'm uh -huh. sure. Yeah. Kevin's back there, like, hello, ladies. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get every bit get of this Get it all out. out there. Yes, get it all out of there. Now, because I thought it might be too much. You want this to sit in your refrigerator, yes. and you want all these flavors to marry together. I'm not kidding you. It is so good. I can't wait to try it. Mm -hmm. This is going to be delicious. And you're right. It needs to sit a little bit. Now, if you were desperate, okay, mm -hmm. and you didn't have chicken, but you had canned chicken, you can do that, too. That would work. Yeah. So I'll take the plate, and I'll just try it real mm -hmm. quick. Yes, I know how good it is. I know. It's, I don't even I don't remember it, so uh -huh. I'm excited. Let me get a little mm -hmm. crunch and a little sweetness. And it here. is in the homekeeper's cookbook. Yes. It's called Hawaiian chicken salad. She has no words. It's so good. <laughs> All that crunch. You got your celery. You put that on a good roll mm -hmm. or a good pita mm -hmm. or a good nine grain bread. Yes. Oh. Or just put it on a, a lettuce a leaf and have your Kaiser hard roll if you have uh, your girlfriends over. Yes. Uh huh. So good. You want this. You want the cookbook. There's a hundred recipes mm -hmm. in there. I mean, you want it. Yeah. Right? I'm so glad to see it. I haven't fixed it for so long. It's beautiful, it too. Is, it's just uh, indescribable. Yeah. All right. If you want this recipe, it's free, and uh, the information is coming up on your screen. You can use one of the methods to get it. And then I want you to meet Wayne Deary if you haven't yet. You're going to love this man. We love him right here. All of us do, don't we? We do. Yeah, okay. If you would like a copy of today's recipe, you may receive it by contacting us through social media as listed on the screen. When requesting a copy through the mail, be sure to include a self-addressed stamped envelope. Thank you, and please know we always appreciate hearing from our viewers. All right. I'm so happy to welcome Wayne Deary back. Yes, Glad it's good to be here. here. I follow you on Facebook, and you're yeah. always putting a church in Africa. How many yeah. have you? We, we have built over 60 churches. Matter of fact, in the last two and a half years, we've built over 40 uh, churches. and so It's picked up steam. It really has. Uh -huh. It really has. We are planting or building a church every two weeks now in Kenya now and also in Tanzania. We're in two different countries now. I don't remember if I've ever asked you this. But I know that a lot of my viewers would be interested to know, how'd you start doing this? Because I know you didn't get a board together and do all kinds of things and yeah. uh, well, you know, a big organization, that's what I'm trying to say. Sure, we, you know, we pastored uh, for years, and one of my greatest joys was leading our church uh, into doing missions. Mm -hmm. And so we just did missions. Even as a youth pastor, we would take several trips, mission trips with young people. And mm -hmm. then when we were senior pastor, we did this. And we ju I just got so overwhelmed with it, I realized this is where God was leading us. And so as our children got older, we said, you know, let's, let's step out and let's do this. And so we were always church planters, even as pastors, senior pastors. We always were planting churches and there, the 1040 window and Africa and all all over and we just loved it and over time we're like you know what let's let's do this full time so but that's a giant step of faith you it's have family huge. to support yeah it, it was huge you know the first couple of years uh, you know you questioned god did i hear you you know 
uh, there's got to be something that, that's easier, you know, and the paychecks oh. don't come and other things don't happen. But, you know, when you hear God, it, that's so important mm -hmm. because in the difficult times, you can say, I know I've heard from God and we're going to keep moving forward. And I'm so glad that we did. Well, I have been thrilled uh, to watch what you're doing yeah. on Facebook. And I've mm -hmm. just noticed it's picked up. Yeah. You're yeah. doing so many more in such a brief amount of time. Yeah, we really are. And uh, the Lord has blessed us. You know, we have a big vision. We plant to a thousand. We're believing God for a thousand church plants and church buildings before my time is done with this ministry. Well, also, the Bible indicates He's going to do a big work and a quick work yeah. right at the end time. And if you don't think we're living in the end time, Man, you don't we, know the Bible. We are. I'm going to tell you what. We, we are now going to areas where no white man or foreigner has ever stepped foot. And so they make a road for us to get up there. We plant these churches with these pastors under a tree. Then we come back in six months to a year and we build them a church building for $8,000. They plant them under, under a, tree. a tree. Under a tree. A pastor starts his church uh, under a tree. And... Uh, and then we come back in and we build them a building. For every building we build, people come because they see a miracle. There's no buildings there. No. I mean, you'll see pictures in a minute. Yes. There's no, no buildings anywhere. This is it. This is the only building. It becomes the church, it becomes the schoolhouse. It becomes everything to these people. And there's something so important about a building. Especially out there. For, for a church. Yeah, it's, it's, an, it's huge. Uh -huh. You know, because it frees you to do so many things that God has laid upon your heart. When you don't have a building, you're limited. For them, you've got sun, rain, elephants, animals. You've got everything because we're 45 minutes from an enormous safari. And so when you're out in that area, it's, it's brutal. But the most beautiful thing is that church building is the number one evangelistic tool that we have. Mm -hmm. People see the building, they see God. Mm -hmm. And they say only God mm -hmm. could build a building in the middle of mud huts. Are you the first white man that a lot of them have seen? Yes. How, how do they, they relate run. to you? They run. Really? Yes. We brought a group of pe men <gasps> to an area for the first time. And they were all white? They were all white. Uh -huh. And we got out of the, the safari van and when the kids and the people saw us, I'd say three-fourths of them screamed. The kids started crying, and they ran because they'd never seen a never white person. They thought we were ghosts. So eventually we had them come back. You know, we take pictures and some pictures. They take your hand, and they try to rub. Really? You know, and, and so, yeah, it's a, it's a beautiful thing. But when you get to an area like that where um, there's just what nothing but mess people. You know, we have interpreters mm -hmm. to do that. We're actually going into areas now with different dialects mm -hmm. of the Ma language, which many people said there aren't any, mm -hmm. but there are. And mm -hmm. so we're going out to areas now where we get in there and say, wow, this is a different dialect. This is, this is different. And so we've struggled with the translations. Now, what we're talking about is people, and uh, only God knows for sure how they learned about the Lord and a little sure? group was formed and mm -hmm. a pastor. Uh, let's show them some pictures uh, because, you know, when you say it's right out in the bush, yeah. that's where it is. Man, it's I'm telling you, it's really it's not out there. a yeah. bush. Let's take a look at uh, some. Of, now that is inside one of the churches you built. Yep, this is inside one of our church buildings. Uh, a Probably typical, the first service, right? What, no, this one wasn't. It's a typical Sunday morning. As you can see, there are... Oh, they're crowded. It's crowded. There, believe it or not, there's over 200 people in that building, and that building is about as big as a Starbucks. Uh -huh. To give you an idea how many people. This is our typical church. This is a Sunday morning church underneath a tree. People I don't see a tree, though. <laughs> well, the, you see the leaves. You see the shadow. The tree's behind I me. Do I do see the shadow. Yeah, and so it's just kind of a saying we have. We're starting our church underneath the and tree. And you're preaching to an, through an interpreter. There. Yes, yes, we are, my partner. This is a church we just built. This is a dedication uh, Sunday. There's over 400 people that showed up. These people start walking at midnight to get to that church service on Sunday morning. They are so dedicated. It's all they have. And that's the church, and there's not a shrub around Yeah, this there. is one of the churches I want to show you because I want people to get an idea. You, there is nothing as far as the eye can see in any direction, but that church will have 150 to 175 people on Sunday morning. That's a luxury for them. It, they, they, as you see, this is it. This mm -hmm. is the only building that mm -hmm. they 
they will see. And that is also becomes the school. Okay, now, um, let's, put, uh, let's put the website up, and then later in the program we're going to show you the Facebook page. Uh, that's the reason I ask you to grab a pencil at the top of the program. Um, Wayne and I were talking earlier that my belief, and he uh, totally agreed with me, that when the Holy Spirit impresses you sure. to um, give to something, if everybody would just follow that leading, we never have taken an offering or yeah. whatever. So uh, if the Lord moves on your heart, a lot of people could afford to build one of those. Yeah, eight to ten thousand dollars builds a, a, a building. You know, my wife and I, we set this vision. We set it so big that it scared us mm -hmm. because we knew that if it was small, we could do it. We wanted God to do it. So we have a saying that we live in a constant need of a miracle. And so when people hear that, they need to realize they can help become our miracle. Mm -hmm. Whether it's a monthly support or say, I want to leave a legacy out in Tanzania or Kenya. I want to leave a legacy. My family wants to leave. We're having families so put the money together. Mm -hmm. You know, several brothers and sisters, they all get together. They put their money together and say, we want to build and a church in Kenya. Individual Tanzania. churches. I, churches I know, are um, building. Access Church I, in Lakeland. I love those people there. Mm -hmm. And they've built several, haven't they? They've built five churches in 18 months. Now, getting to build another one in November because mm -hmm. people see the pictures. They get so overwhelmed. They hear the stories of the people that have come and seen it. And they're like, I want to build a church. Well, you know, when I see pictures like this, they're very moving. But also then I think, oh, my, what a job. Where do you get supplies? Yeah. Where do, who puts it together? Yeah. There's we, we so do. many. Yeah. We, we and you know. There's a our, checklist, right? Yeah. We have 18 acres uh, out in the bush. We have 10. Now, where do you get the land? Uh, believe it or not, it was given to us. The government saw. We've never paid one penny for land. The government gives it. The community gives it. Individuals give it. They. Uh, my now my partner was on that 18 acres. They invited us in and said, we want you to take it over and, and run it. That's a miracle. A miracle. We have a clinic. We have all our doctors, nurses, uh, lab technicians. They all live uh, on campus. We have a Jason school of a thousand kids, award-winning school of a thousand kids. And so, because uh, we're, you know, we build buildings, but we're about people. This is about people. This is about the mass side people, yeah. ministering health, uh, spiritual, everything to them that we can to make My their lives better. My viewers are probably tired of hearing me say it, but I believe <laughs> get them saved, leave them to, lead them to Jesus, yeah. and then educate them. Sure. That's the only way they're really going to change their nation. Yeah. Uh, Absolutely. It's, uh, it's so important. But where do you get the materials? We, there's an area uh, not far from where we're at, and we'll go in and we'll buy the materials. It's very crude. It ain't no Home Depot. It takes all day to order all the materials, and then we have to load them up, and then these uh, looks like dump trucks will come and take them to the area. Most of the areas now, if it's raining or there's issues, we can't get the trucks up there. It's a lot of work. It is a lot of work, and everything has to work together to get that out there. But we've, we've nailed it down so much so you have that we built a church in six days. Six mm -hmm. days we build that church building. Mm -hmm. Well, um, tell me how these Christians get together. What is the, what's the main religion in that well, part of Africa? Well, they have what they call the God of Africa, okay? And so, though Kenya is very, um, uh, there's many Christians in Kenya, especially in the more uh, concentrated areas, okay? So but did some missionary out, go over there a few sure. years ago? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, but it. what happens is where we're at, we're now coming up on areas they've never, they've not heard the gospel. Because see, in my mind, I think, okay, here comes this American and he builds this church mm -hmm. and here they're coming. And like you said, they start yeah. 12 hours, 24 hours before. Yeah. Well, you know, we, for every church we build, that, that church is 30 people under a tree. It'll stay 30 people under a tree for 20 years. You build them a building, it will triple or quadruple in size in a year. Then what happens is they want a bigger church. And I said, we're not building you a bigger church. We're going to start another church. Mm -hmm. You can go down this one road and just see every uh, five or six miles, you'll see one of our churches built. 
just one right after another because we just keep building when they grow we plant more people out of that church and then as they grow underneath the tree we build them a church and that's why we're seeing this multiplication begin to happen can you describe the the poverty what what would a family have there they got a house and mm -hmm. they always have these colorful sure. clothes I well know. we call you know there's third world and what I call fourth world okay third world is you have poverty but at least you have running water it may be dirty but you have it you have a place to use the restroom all that. this is fourth world it's not worse it's just different so they live in mud huts but it's a beautiful way of living they are shepherds like the Old Testament goats sheep, cows and and that's how they get their money uh, it's a difficult life just because there is no transportation. If water dries up, we're in a drought right now, they have to go miles and miles and miles with their sheep and their goats to go find water. Uh, so, yeah. Well, that's it's, hardship. It's, it's a hard life. It's a hard life. But we don't really look at it as a poverty life. We don't try to change that. What we try to change is spiritual and their health. Mm -hmm. So education with their health and then get their minds educated so they can become better. The rest of it will happen. Yeah, God will do it. When was your first trip there? In Africa, I've been over 40 different countries uh, all throughout my life. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, we started out there in 2011 of July. We started out there. So the first, first church you built, I'll bet that was... I bet you look back on that. I know. Oh, how did you we know, <laughs> we built three churches one year, and I thought I died and went to heaven. <laughs> I thought three churches, I'll never top that. And then in the last two and a half years, we've built you know over forty churches and planted over thirty six churches, uh, brand new works. Okay, now the uh, when you say you plant it, how do mm -hmm. you do that? We I know work, what it is to yeah, plant a church, but how mm -hmm. do you do it over we there? We work with different denominations out there, and we also have our own fellowship. And so they come under our umbrella of our fellowship, and we just love on them. They're out there in the middle of nowhere, and there ain't nobody loving on these pastors. We just start loving on them. And then we just started seeing them duplicate themselves. And so we love on them. We raise them up. We put them underneath a tree, or we help that denomination put them under a tree. And then as they begin to grow, and they're good stewards, and they're doing what God has called them to do, and they're, they're staying in fellowship with us, and then we'll come in and we'll build them a building. And then as that church grows and it gets to capacity, then we're having them raise up pastors in that church. And then they'll take 20, 30 people and go seven kilometers down the road in the bush and, and start another church. Uh, let's put up your Facebook address. Yeah. And uh, what can people learn when they go there? Well, when they go to our Facebook page, they'll be able to, of course, see us and see our family and how, how we live life. And But constantly, we have all the pictures of everything we do, from the moment we buy the materials to taking the materials out there. They see the pictures of the starting up of the building. They see the dedication. They see videos. They see all that stuff. We're very, very it's very important to us that our ministry has character mm -hmm. and that we're authentic. And what I mean by that is you give me money to build a church, you get to watch it go up. Mm -hmm. You get to watch me spend your money mm -hmm. building that building. We take a picture of you and your family. We hang it up in the church when it's done. They pray for you every single Sunday. They would pray for your family or whoever's family starts it or whatever church. We got pictures of churches that built the building. They, we hang it up in the back and they pray every single Sunday. Yeah, you're giving me goosebumps right now. It's, it's incredible. And so people get to see their church go up. Mm -hmm. And then we teach them to thank the people in the English language at the very end. Wow. And I'm telling, you show that to a church on a Sunday morning and there's not a dry eye in the place, man. It is fantastic. Yeah, we have just a couple minutes. I'm going to switch gears. We were talking about something in the makeup room. Yeah. Um, that I had mentioned, my daughter and her family, they go, they've been to Guatemala twice to sure. build homes. Mm -hmm. My uh, grandson, who's over, way over six feet tall, and can really hustle, you know, a lot of just grunt work. But... Um, he had mentioned to me he thought those children were happier than American children, and they have nothing. They don't nothing. Have anything. All they got is Jesus. And yeah. um, I mentioned to you they're on these phones with these idiotic video games and all that. And tell me what you do. He has four children. Four children. He has a wife that loves the Lord, and 
Yeah, we, a, we just never did. We let, let our kids play. You have a few play. rules about phones. Yeah, we did. yeah, they're grown up now, but all my kids are serving Jesus. Uh -huh. Two of them are, uh, one's in full-time ministry. She just stepped a position in Atlanta. It's a praise and worship leader. My other daughter's going into full-time ministry. And my, my other uh, daughter, my youngest daughter does. We didn't let them play all the video games. We don't uh, let them do all the phone stuff. We don't try to, like, suppress them. Yeah, but, but what we do is we point them to what is important in life, you know. And so the people out there, all they have is Jesus. They don't celebrate birthdays, Christmas. They don't get any gifts. They don't get any. We gave Bibles to people this last trip that were, that were 35, 40, 55. They've never, they've loved Jesus. They've served Jesus. They've never in their life had a Bible. Had a Bible. And so we handed them Bibles. They were holding, they were hugging, their tears streaming down their face because a lot of them can't read. But we find the people who can and we give them that Bible to that family. And for 10 bucks, you can you buy a Bible. So people are mm -hmm. sending us money, $1,000 here, $1,000 there, to buy Bibles, to give to these people. Okay, Never what had language a Bible. are they in? The Ma language. Okay. We have found them now in the Ma language and a brand new translation. It's phenomenal. And so our goal is to build churches and get the Word of God to them. You know, there's one more thing. Get back to the other. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you said when your kids got home from school, they gave you... Yeah, we gave them a thing. They phone. had to give you the phone. <laughs> yeah. They're older Boy, now. You, and you or me. Well, well, you know, it's amazing how now they, they don't care as much, you know, and... Uh, Take so, it away from them, you know. You know, what someone told me, they said, buy your kid the nicest phone you can possibly buy them because if they ever do wrong, you can just take it away from them. <laughs> <laughs> they do right immediately. They do all their chores immediately. Yeah. You know, the goal is just to teach discernment. Mm -hmm. We teach discernment to our kids. A lot of times you're like, here's all the rules. And you've got to have some rules, obviously. But I'm just, I look at my, at my son or my daughter in a teaching moment. And Praise I say, well, what do you think that. about that? What would you do in that situation? Mm -hmm. Well, I wouldn't do it. Well, good, good for you. So what that's teaching them to think for themselves and say, God wouldn't want me to do that. I shouldn't do that, mm -hmm. you know. So it helps. But doesn't it kind of boil down to if you're a parent, be a parent? Be a parent. Don't be a friend. Be a parent. Like they say, uh, don't let the inmates run the asylum. Yep. So that, and they know. will. <laughs> if you let them, they, they will. will do it and they'll and tell then you get upset they'll when everything's chaotic. Which room you can have. Yeah, yeah, when everything's chaotic. We are out of time. you got to come back. Thank you so uh, much oh, for allowing so us to come. We appreciate it. Through you. And I'm so glad to really uh, be able to tell the viewers about it. So, don't forget it, but also remember, there's no higher calling than that of a homekeeper. God bless you. If you should miss a homekeeper's program, you can catch up by going to www.ctnonline.com. Click on CTN Programs and then on Homekeepers.